Good morning. <clears throat> Gonna have to ask your indulgence. I'm getting over laryngitis. I led a two-day meeting and I couldn't talk at all the last couple of days. I got a little bit of voice back. But uh, pleased to be here this morning uh, to moderate this very exciting panel. And I'd like to begin by thanking our break sponsor, H.W. Uh, Lochner, and um, then to say that I think we would all agree that to get anything done, especially when we have a heavy lift like transportation, you have to have effective leadership. And I'm thrilled to say we've got some of the best leaders we could hope to have in our region here with us today. Mayor Buckhorn from Tampa, Mayor Kreisman from St. Petersburg, Mayor Credicos from Clearwater, and Mayor Wiggs from Lakeland. Let's give them all a round of applause. <laughs> Let me kick this off by uh, tapping into the title of this program, Seamlessly Connecting Our Region. Each of you lead great cities. They're different. They have different cultures, different histories. Why do you guys want to connect them? What do you think about that concept, seamlessly connecting our regions with something other than just roads? Let's start with you, Mayor Buckhorn. Gary, thank you. And I think the simple answer is we don't have a choice. I mean, we are either going to succeed together or we are going to fail alone. And I think all of us up here recognize, partially because um, many of us have been friends for a long time. I mean, certainly Mayor Kreisman and Mayor Credicos and I have been friends for 20 years, 25 years. Uh, Mayor Wiggs has been on the Lakeland City Council for a number of years. We don't care who's a Democrat, who's a Republican. We don't care who lives in Hillsborough, who lives in Pinellas County or Polk County or Pasco County. Um, but we are competing as a region around the globe for the intellectual capital that Mayor Murphy talked about, um, as well as for economic development opportunities and people um, in areas that we compete against, you know, the emerging Sunbelt cities that would steal our best and brightest and that have for a decade stolen our best and brightest kids and never sent them back, um, are also competing as a region. So we need to be together. We need to recognize the importance of connecting Pinellas to Hillsborough, Hillsborough to Pasco, and Hillsborough to Polk County. It makes us more competitive. We are far less competitive as a region without that multimodal options for our folks uh, to use. So, I think the reality for all of us as mayors is we're going we're gonna to live uh, together or we're going to die singularly, and I don't intend to die. Um, we are, you will not see the bickering and the parochialism and the partisanship that has existed in this community for decades out of any of us. I mean, it's just not happening. Those days are over with. And so we get it. But it's all about our economic survival. And if we're going to compete for that bright young talent, for those millennials, um, and make this a destination for intellectual capital, uh, we've got to work together and we've got to be connected. Thank you so much, Mayor. Uh, Mayor Kreisman, how do you feel about this regional perspective? Well, I couldn't agree more with my friend uh, Bob. Um, you know, we have opportunities, and you talked about how historically our communities haven't played well in the, in the sandbox together, and I think that's true. If anything, we used to throw sand at each other. Um, but we do recognize that, uh, continuing that analogy, we need to start building sandcastles together uh, to be successful. And you know, our, each of our communities has its unique characteristics, but as a region, we have a unique characteristic that plays in holistically for all of us. And, for us to be able to, because uh, each one of us, we're all trying to bring businesses to our cities. Uh, and when we're talking to businesses who are looking at relocating, uh, transportation is, is one of the things that always comes up. Uh, and so for us to be competitive with communities and, and uh, you know, like Charlotte, who is, uh, not only has good public transportation, they're expanding it. For us to be able to compete with those folks, we have got to do a better job. I, uh, I always, uh, I'm telling the story recently that, that uh, I think is really applicable, um, that I personally experienced uh, that, that really talks about, you know, our two cities together. And this is not an unusual story where someone in, whether it's in Tampa or it, that's coming to St. Peter Clearwater or is in Clearwater or St. Pete going to Lakeland. But I was, I had a meeting in Tampa to go to from downtown St. Pete and hadn't been to this location before. So I put 
uh, the address in on my phone, on my uh, GPS. And it spit out two hours and 51 minutes. And I thought, there's just no way it can be two hours and 51 minutes to go to Tampa. I gotta, must have put it in wrong. So I, I put the address in again and it came back two hours and 51 minutes. And then I looked at my phone and I realized it was on a setting for bus. And when I changed it to car, it reduced it from 251 down to 51 minutes. So that's what our current situation is like to utilize public transportation without Greenlight Pinellas. A, a 51 minute trip becomes two hours and 51 minutes. No one's gonna do that. We can't expect people to get on a bus and do that and get out of their cars. Likewise, when we're talking about to businesses and coming down here and how easy it is for their employees to get back and forth, they're not gonna get on a bus for two hours and 51 minutes. So it's critical. Thank you. Mayor Criticos, is it important for Clearwater to be connected by transportation to Pinellas, Hillsborough, Polk, and beyond? Can I? Oh, sorry. On. Um, Our sand is no, it's off. <laughs> See, we share. <laughs> Connectivity the, the, the sand that they throw back and forth from each other comes from Clearwater Beach, you know, <laughs> because we've got the best sand in the area. <laughs> but the point is, we don't want them. We don't want you to take two hours to get to Clearwater Beach. You know, we want you to feel like it's part of your hometown, and that's what all these other areas have that we don't have. We don't have the ability to say that Tampa Bay is our hometown. I'm a native. It used to take me 30 minutes to go from Tarpon Springs to downtown St. Petersburg with three stoplights. Okay. Now, you can't go a mile without hitting three stoplights, all of them red. You know, so think of what the advantage of bus rapid transit would mean. Think of what the advantage it would ha mean for all of us to be able to get around our communities, within our communities, and with, within the area. It's embarrassing to tell a visitor that he cannot get from Tampa Airport, the best airport in the country, to any place else without, as Mayor Kreisman said, taking two hours. You go anywhere else overseas and you get to Central City at a drop of a hat. You can't do that here. And we need, and we realize, and you realize that we need to get this done for the entire area. Thank you. And, and Mayor Wicks, uh, give us your perspective from Polk County. Well, clearly we're in the kind of in the middle of the region, and as I've gone out and spoken to citizens in our community, I've talked about it in terms of us providing the leadership necessary uh, for the connectivity this, to work between the east and the west sort of, sort of, side of the region. Um, in in Lakeland and in Polk County, we have over sixty thousand veterans mm -hmm. who need to get to the James H Haley uh, VA uh, uh, hospital, which would be a free ride for us. And, and other citizens who need to get to Moffitt, who need to get to uh, Tampa International Airport. When we look to the east, we have over 7,500 folks just working at Disney. So it's critically important for Polk County to, be, to play our part in joining together throughout the region uh, for public transportation. Thanks so much. Mayor Kreisman, I saw you had your yes button on today, and you've been an outspoken advocate for Greenlight. We know if it's successful, it'll bring some buses and, and rail to the county, but what are, what are some of the indirect benefits? Why are you so enthusiastic about Greenlight Pinellas? Well, it brings business. I mean, and, and, and that's really what it's all about. It's about economic development, and I know uh, my colleagues up here, they're talking the same, about the same thing, about the, the impact on economic development that Greenlight Pinellas will have. And I talked uh, in my earlier comments, I mentioned about our ability to attract businesses to this community. Uh, that we have a difficult time doing because our, our infrastructure regarding transportation is not at the same level as other metropolitan areas. But it's the development that occurs uh, around public transportation also 
uh, that is a huge benefit. Um, if you look at other communities that have good, robust public transportation, whether it's BRT or enhanced bus services or light rail, around those hubs you see a lot of development that's occurred. And the reason is, uh, as, as my friend uh, talks about so much, the millennials, they don't want to drive anymore. Uh, they want to be able to just jump on public transportation, get to work, get to a grocery store, get to a restaurant, get to an entertainment venue. Um, and they don't want to have to own a car. They don't want to have to pay for the car, for the insurance, for the gas. Uh, so it's, it's really important for that reason. But the other piece that's important, I think, too, is um, a as we have become a younger community in a lot of respects, we're also aging. Uh, and as Mayor Wiggs was talking about, the ability for that segment of our population to be able to get to the doctor's office, to the grocery store, uh, and not have to worry about getting behind the wheel of their car when their abilities might not be at the same level they used to be. And Pinellas is pretty much built out, isn't it? So would you anticipate redevelopment? Oh, I think th there's huge opportunities for redevelopment. And I'm, uh, I can't wait for it to pass in November because uh, I'm very excited about the opportunities. And quite frankly, I'm also looking forward, sorry, Bob, but to uh, that stop right outside Tropicana Field. Uh, <laughs> so that our visitors can take public transportation to go to a Rays game uh, and not have to worry about how they're going to get home when that game is over, which right now they've got to worry about. Mayor Criticus, just looking at the Pinellas Greenlight Plan, what benefits do you see for Clearwater arising out of that plan when it's successful? We are going to be able to have an opportunity for our visitors to get around our beaches without having to use public transportation. They're used to that. They are coming from metropolitan areas that have public transportation. They can't get to the Dali now. They can't get to Tampa, to Ybor, to Channel Side without a car. And this will enable us to connect the areas. And more importantly, like I said earlier, it will enable us, like Mayor Kreisman said, to look at these redevelopment opportunities. I was a millennial before the term became fancy because when I worked in Washington for two years, I put 3,000 miles on my car. I put 3,000 miles on a car in two years because I used public transportation. I used the metro and I used the bus to get to work during the week. You can't do that now. And that's the advantage that this will have, not only for our locals, like yourselves, but also our visitors. And we can't not keep reemphasizing that point. Well, there's a sales tax involved. Do I understand you to be saying you still expect a net benefit to tourism in Clearwater? Uh, none of us like taxes. And none of us like the fact that we're going to have the highest sales tax in the state, okay? But the trade-off is what is important. The tourists are going to, going to be paying a substantial portion of this. Our local residents will be getting a break because the PSTA tax on our property will go away. So that's what we have to keep in mind. And the other thing that we have to keep in mind, and I don't know how many of y'all remember all of this, but years ago, there was a proposal to build the Bayside Bridge and make it a toll road. And it got voted down because people did not want to pay to have a Bayside Bridge that they were gonna have to pay for. It. So what happened? We waited 10 years and we went through Penny for Pinellas, and we finally got a Bayside Bridge. We can't afford to say no again, because that's only going to push us back that much further. Mayor Wiggs, in Polk County, you're looking ahead to a referendum also. My ride, my roads. Can you give us a brief overview of that plan and tell us how it meets the needs of Polk County? Yes, thank you, Gary. As some of you may know, our initiative has both a road component and a public transportation component. Um, from the road standpoint, uh, it will allow us to uh, handle our more than 3,000 miles of roads within the county. 
uh, critically important. It'll help, us, it'll help us to leverage state and federal funds that will help us to take care of the, uh, the CSXs and the Mosaics and the Amazons uh, in our community. Um, it also will allow us to, to reach into uh, across, across, the entire, um, uh, across the entire region. From the, my ride standpoint, I'm getting over my cold too, Gary. It will allow us to uh, customize our schedules, transportation schedules for our 17 municipalities as well as, as Point Siena, uh, important part of our, uh, of our uh, community. Um, we, uh, and, the, and, the, and, the, and one of the big things, and it's from a practical standpoint, uh, it will allow us to shift, fundamentally shift our transportation funding from ad valorem tax rates to a, a sales tax rate, which will not only allow us to spread the cost over uh, current residents, but also seasonal residents and our tourists. So it's, it's critically important, I think, that we fund it the way we're looking at funding it. Thank you. Now, Mayor Buckhorn, you got a referendum to the west, you got a referendum to the east. What are we doing in Hillsborough County? <laughs> Praying. <laughs> See, Gary, just to show you what good friends Mayor Kreisman and I are, I wasn't even going to take the bait on the raise question. <laughs> I, I was quoted a number of years ago saying I wasn't going to be the boyfriend in the divorce, to which his, the former mayor used to say, but you sure act like the pool guy. <laughs> so, because he's my friend, no speedo coming out now, brother. <laughs> Um, Thank you for that, Mary. Yeah, that's <laughs> Everyone just woke up and said, whoa. <laughs> All right. Understand this for us in Hillsborough County, why this is important. I need these referendums to pass because the momentum coming out of Pinellas County with the passage of Greenlight and the, and the, the momentum coming out of Polk County uh, with the successful passage of that referendum will allow us moving into 2016 uh, to really come into that environment with a lot of positive support. You know, there will be those out there that will oppose it using the same misleading arguments, their own set of facts, their own set of opinions. Uh, but if these two counties are able to pass it, then the voters in Hillsborough County will understand the very direct and positive connection that will occur. The ability to link up downtown St. Pete to the beaches, to the airport, to downtown Tampa, to the employment centers north of Tampa, connecting eventually with Pasco County and Polk County with a multimodal transportation system is critical to this area if we are gonna succeed. In no uncertain terms, all of us need to do whatever we can to help these two counties pass. And I'm reminded all the time that when you're preaching to the choir, you've turned your back on the congregation. We need to talk to the congregation, not to each other. We're all in on this one. Each of us in our respective counties, or most of us here, um, we've got to make sure that they pass and we need to do whatever we can to do it. I'm certainly involved in Pinellas to the extent that I have any uh, political currency. Um, I will do whatever I can to help them be successful uh, because I think the folks in Pinellas need to recognize that eventually that connection is going to cross the Howard Franklin Bridge. It's going to come to Hillsborough County. It's going to give people the ability to get to TIA quickly, to downtown Tampa quickly, and to downtown St. Pete and the beaches as well. Got to have it. We're all in. If we talk the talk, we've got to walk the walk too as a region. Um, so let's do whatever we can to help these two counties. And in 2016, um, we'll be knocking on your doors. Now, Mayor Buckhorn is basically saying for him to be successful, he needs for the rest of you to be successful. Do you feel the same way about the contiguous counties? Can you realize the full benefits of Greenlight, Pinellas, or my ride? my roads without the same kind of moving forward in Hillsborough and contiguous counties. Mayor Kreisman. Well, I, I think I mean, we, we can be successful, but not to the same degree and not at the same level. I mean, we clearly uh, recognize the regional impact of being connected uh, and our ability to compete regionally will be certainly not the same if, if it passes in Pinellas and it doesn't pass in Hillsborough. Uh, so I, I've committed to the Mayor Buckhorn that once we pass it in, in Pinellas that uh, I will do everything I can to help him 
uh, as he has done to help us um, be successful in his county. Um, we have to do it. I mean, I, I think you'll hear all of us say that over and over again. Um, this, is a, this is a different time, you know, and whether Mayor Buckhorn and I are friends or not, we both recognize the importance of working together uh, for the betterment of our region. Uh, it's just easier when you're friends, but we would have done it anyway because we recognize the importance of that. This is a big piece of it. And Mayor Credicos, can you get the kind of impact that you hope for your beaches? Can you bring out those tourists if Hillsborough County doesn't get organized and have the same kind of forward progress that you hope to achieve with Greenlight Pinellas? It would be important for Hillsborough to pass it because this is still known as the Tampa Bay area. And unless we change the name of the bay to Clearwater Bay, uh, you know, it's not going to make any difference if, if you know, so Tampa's going to have to pass it, Hillsborough's going to have to pass it for the entire region to benefit. And Mayor Wiggs, would Polk County benefit from a robust transportation network to the west of you? Uh, of course we would, and we need to see success stories. It's important for us to see that Sunrail is doing well. It's important for us to see that, to send the message to our a little bit skeptical uh, voters, particularly in light of the controversies that surrounded Sunrail. We need to see that working well. We need to see uh, uh, green light panels working well. And then uh, my commitment too, and I don't have much I can do, but we, we, we need uh, Mayor Buckhorn to be successful in his initiative because we really are becoming more and more dependent on one another. Of course, you're all, Visionaries, you're looking forward to the future, and we're anticipating <coughs> continual growth and progress in the future, but how do you feel about how we're doing today with our current infrastructure? Are we competitive? Are we meeting our needs today? Mayor Buckhorn? Not even close. Um, you know, when we go through these exercises with potential relocations and the corporations go through their metrics as to how we stack up with other, other jurisdictions, I mean, we do great on a lot of measures. I mean, we, are, we knock it out of the park, but we always fall short on transportation and the ability for that workforce uh, to get to those locations um, that the employers need them to get to using mass transit. And so, um, you know, we're never going to build our way out of this. We can't build enough roads in this state to get out of the problem that we're in and the, the upcoming in migration. I mean, we're back on a path an upward trajectory, people are moving to the state of Florida again. We've got to find a way to give them mobility options, particularly when it comes to attracting the young intellectual capital that will drive this economy for the next two decades. You've heard Mayor Murphy say it as he goes around the country. Those young people that are flocking to the downtowns, certainly of St. Pete and, uh, and Tampa, don't want to own a car, they want to live in an urban environment, they want to live in a high-rise apartment, they want to be able to walk to the restaurants and bars and the amenities, and they want to have options that include Uber, that include Lyft, that include a robust taxi system, a mass transit system that works. That is what our future is, and that is who we're competing for. And if we don't have these options available to them, we become less desirable as a city for them individually and collectively for corporate relocation. So we're doing good. We're not where we need to be, and we sure need to invest in more to make sure that my kid's future and Rick's kid's future and... and George's grandkids and Howard's grandkids and children's. This investment that we make in Greenlight, in the Polk County Initiative, and in Hillsborough efforts is not a vote for us, it's a vote for our children. So we've got to stand up and decide what that, what that future is going to look like for those kids that are so dependent on us. Mayor Wiggs, even putting aside anticipated population growth and business growth in Polk County, do you feel satisfied that you're meeting the county's needs today transportation infrastructure and services in some ways we've been able we're beginning to shake the mantle of redneckness that we've carried for many years that's just the way things were but sadly if you've seen the Brookings Institute um, uh, recent reports Polk County is rated as the seventh poorest county in the country which is a sad sad thing and particularly when a lot of it's applicable to lack of public transportation 
we are making a concerted effort to, to draw, same as uh, Mayor Buckhorn was talking about, to draw the millennials. And they're attracted to our downtown. But frankly, the conversation often, they come to me and they say, we love downtown Lakeland, but we want to be able to get to the beautiful downtown St. Petersburg or all the amenities of, of, uh, of Tampa or the beaches and Clearwater. What are you doing to provide those kinds of things? If, the, if this fails, I don't have a very good answer for them. And uh, Mayors Kreisman and Credicos, uh, isn't Pinellas just running out of money even to meet its current needs without some help from this proposal? I don't know that we're running out of money, but we can't afford to build more roads because then we will have nothing but roads. Um, we're going to have an opportunity for the next generation to redefine urban flight. And it's going to be into our downtown areas, into our communities. And when you've got a built out community like Clearwater is like Pinellas County is like St. Petersburg, although they have a little bit more room for, for development than we do. Uh, we need to figure out a way to attract, as Mayor Buckhorn has so aptly put over and over again, this generation that doesn't want to have a car, that wants to be able to work, that wants to use public transportation. And Mayor Kreisman, is just, this is all about a, a vision for the future, or do you feel there's an imperative today to get going with Greenlight Pinellas? Well, we, we can't wait. I mean, if, if Greenlight Pinellas doesn't pass, it will set us back uh, at least 10 years. Um, so we can't wait. You know, our, our jobs as mayors is to, to do everything we can to, you know, bring business to our communities to improve the quality of life. And transportation's a big piece of that. Um, you know, you, you don't you don't have the same quality of life in a community that has uh, that does not have robust public transportation. And you know, I, I've visited enough cities with with my family uh, and ridden really good, robust public transportation to know that when my daughter goes off to college and she's looking at communities that have good public transportation that she'd go to, she's not going to want to come back here and live here if we don't change things. Uh, and that's not acceptable to me. Uh, I want her to come back. I don't want to have to move to be close to her where she's at. Uh, and, and that's a big piece of it. Now let's stretch a little geographically and get beyond these four cities. Talk a little bit about All Aboard Florida. You're familiar with that project, starting in South Florida, moving up to Orlando, potentially Jacksonville. How do you feel about whether that ought to connect out to Tampa Bay? Well, first I want to tell Mayor Kreisman that it's okay, she'll be living in Tampa and you can come on over anytime. <laughs> <laughs> and to Mayor Wiggs, if, if I watch Duck Dynasty, do I get some of that red nakedness? <laughs> that was a great word, I'm gonna have to use that next time. We have a little left. <laughs> Um, all aboard Florida, we are hopeful that the second leg will be from Orlando to Tampa along the path of what would have been a, a brand new um, high-speed rail corridor. Unfortunately, I've got mayors all over the country who thank me for that decision as they build their rail network with our money. Um, all aboard Florida is potentially going to use the existing DOT right-of-way corridor that had been reserved for the high-speed rail program. Um, it would terminus at what is still a vacant piece of land, which should have been the terminus of the high-speed rail project in downtown Tampa. It will link Orlando through the I-4 corridor all the way down to Tampa with the next leg being from downtown Tampa to the airport or to the West Shore Multimodal Center to the airport and eventually to downtown St. Petersburg. Um, obviously, it's privately funded, which makes it a little more politically palatable, but I think getting behind the All Aboard Florida effort and helping them succeed on the East Coast uh, and then coming with the second leg uh, from Orlando to Tampa is critical uh, for the development of this region and connecting what is the most powerful uh, region in the state of Florida, which is the I-4 corridor running from Orlando uh, down to St. Petersburg. It is the corridor that decides who presidents are. It's the corridor who decides who governors are. But it also is a powerful economic engine that needs to be linked together. And hopefully with all aboard Florida, Gary, that will happen. Mayors, do you want to comment on that too? Well, I, I couldn't agree more again with with uh, with Bob on that. And you know, and it, I I think back to uh, some previous discussions um, that we used to have when I was in the legislature and, and talking about at that time was with oil drilling. But the reason I mention that is uh, 
the impact of how many people stay on Clearwater Beach, but then go to the theme parks in Orlando. Uh, and to have that connection that makes it easier um, is, is huge. It's a huge, again, it's a huge economic driver. I, I, we do need to see the success uh, on the East Coast. It is frustrating that we don't have that high-speed rail. Um, again, you, you, all you have to do is go look up north and how easy it is to get from uh, one city to another, whether it's New York to Philadelphia or to Baltimore or Washington, D.C., you know, and to have that connectivity uh, in a state our size, um, because they're much more compact up there, uh, but to be able to connect Miami and Tampa and Orlando and Jacksonville and St. Pete and Clearwater and Lakeland, um, it just makes sense. Mayor Wiggs, you agree? From a uh, Polk County's perspective, of course, we're excited about uh, uh, the, uh, the new rail initiative. I, those folks were in my office a couple of weeks ago, and it was encouraging to me to hear that under certain circumstances, private enterprise will step up and, and provide and, and do these really large projects. More likely, of course, are three P connections where we can work together in, in a public-private environment. Um, so seeing successes, as I mentioned a while ago, is important to us. It also helps in, in my uh, jurisdiction to, to focus on something that you all don't have to worry about as much, and that is re-implementing, you don't have to worry about it at all, is re-implementing commercial air service to our regional airport. Because we're talking about regional connectivity, now we can start talking about the full spectrum of what it takes to be a truly uh, active player in connectivity, and bus transportation, rail, and, and air are all important. And Mayor Kretikos. And I, I like to think that if we had this high-speed rail, that Joe Lapano at, at TIA would be able to market our airport as the destination point for the European flights and the flights from Central and South America as the first stop so that they can go to our beaches and enjoy our environment before they go over to Tampa. Because those flights, you know, those tourists spend an awful lot of money and they are used to the public transportation. They're used to rail transportation. And again, it's embarrassing not to be able to have that option available for them. Thanks so much. I'm gonna give each of you an opportunity to sum up, so to speak. So tell us what you'd like us to take away from this forum today. Mayor Buckley. I think first of all, understand how high the stakes are and how important this is. Um, how we as a region have to work together as a region. You've all heard us and, and seen us up here, and I hope you recognize that the days of us bickering and fighting as, as, re, as entities are over with, and the same needs to be true with our respective business communities. I think they got it before the politicians did. Um, but these elections coming up are important, and we need to go take that message from this audience and from this room and go out and, and and get your employees involved, get donors involved. They're coming down the home stretch. They're gonna need folks to write some more checks. Um, dispute the BS that you hear coming from some. Uh, refute it with the facts, and the facts are on our side. And let's go win this thing. I mean, politics is a very simple proposition. Either you win or you lose. We need to win. We need to win for the future of this region and our competitive ability uh, to attract talent to this area is dependent upon what happens on the first Tuesday in November in Polk County and more specifically since we are here with Greenlight Pinellas. Let's go get it done and let's go win and I think our future will be a lot brighter as a result of those decisions. Mayor Kreisman. Thank you and thank you all for, for being here and for everything that you all are doing to help make this uh, successful for, for us in Pinellas and, and Polk. Um, you know, having just gone through a, a campaign, and this is a campaign, uh, myself, not, not a year ago, you know, what was very evident is the two, uh, two things that, that I'm asking all of you all to do. And one is, uh, is educate. Uh, you all need to go out and educate everyone that you know. Five people. If, if you can inform five people of why this is important, um, that, that you'll have done more than we're able to do. Um, <clears throat> and the second piece of it is, 
as much as this is important to educate people as to the importance of this, it doesn't matter if they don't go out and vote. So it's the grassroots element. It's getting people to the polls to vote. Off-year elections are tough. Um, numbers are normally down. So the grassroots effort, the get out the vote effort, uh, has to be uh, stepped up more so this time than, than it was when I was running uh, because of, of the cycle that we're in. So the, the two things I wanna leave you all with are please educate those you know as to the facts because as, as Mayor Buckhorn said, there's a lot of rhetoric uh, from the other side uh, and facts don't seem to be very important to them. Um, so we need, to, we need to talk about the facts and then we need to make sure people go out and vote. Thank you. Mayor Criticus, what are your concluding thoughts? We're not doing this for ourselves. Let's be honest with each other. How many of us would ride the bus to work every day? A handful, okay? And what we're doing is doing this for the community. We're doing this for people who need to be able to get to work. We're doing this because we want to see our area redevelop and continue to grow and expand so that it can be a place that we can be proud to call home. Right now, I think all of us are embarrassed to say to our grandparents that there's no way for them to get, as Mayor Wig said, to the doctor's office. It's embarrassing to tell our children that there's no way for them to get to where they want to be to work and to play unless they have a car. And finally, we are doing this because we really cannot afford to say no once again. Mayor Wiggs, we'll let you wrap up. Thank you. When you look at jurisdictions throughout this country, the ones that have the distinct advantage are those that have a well-defined, well-developed pu public transportation systems. The Tampa Bay region will always be attractive because of its location, because of its amenities, but we are still in a very competitive environment attra in attracting businesses. Uh, on Monday, I was in a meeting with T. Boone Pickens, and he was had a lot of interesting things to say, but one of the things he was talking about was that because of the relative um, low energy costs in the United States, we're actually attracting back businesses who left because of the competitiveness. But he was also clear to point out that there are a lot of components to competitiveness that still are in play, and uh, a well-defined transportation system is one of those keys, and us working together to get that. Thanks so much. Let's say thanks to our incredible panelists.